Do you feel like you don't speak enough Hebrew? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing. But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we're going to talk about 20 travel phrases you should know. Let's get started. 
Could I get a map? אפשר לקבל מפה? Could I get a map? Obviously, you can hear the closeness between the word map and מפה. And I think probably the origin is like Greek or something like that, and it just, you know, found its way into all the different languages. אתה מדבר אנגלית? Do you speak English? אתה מדבר אנגלית? Do you speak English? Well, obviously, if somebody speaks English, he can answer you that question even if you ask it in English. יש אוטובוס משדה תעופה לעיר? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? יש אוטובוס משדה תעופה לעיר? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Yeah, that's always very useful. I suggest you ask this question, like, at the information center inside the airport and not just go outside and start asking people because most people have their own arrangements of getting to their own places and, you know, just talk to people who know stuff, you know? יש אינטרנט אלחוטי בחינם? Is there free Wi-Fi? יש אינטרנט אלחוטי בחינם? Is there free Wi-Fi? Now this is a question that I can relate to. If you want to ask, like, what's the Wi-Fi password in Israel, then you should ask, מה הסיסמה ל-Wi-Fi? If you say Wi-Fi, people know what that is. Um, so just ask, מה הסיסמה? יש לכם חדרים פנויים הלילה? Do you have any vacancies tonight? יש לכם חדרים פנויים הלילה? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Girl, if you didn't pre-order your rooms in advance, like, I don't know, I don't, I can't even, I don't know what to tell you. Okay? Just, what else? אני יכול לעבור לחדר אחר? Could I move to a different room? אני יכול לעבור לחדר אחר? Could I move to a different room? I don't normally do this unless the room is really bad or it smells. That happened to me before, like when the room just smells out of, out of nowhere. <laughs> הזמנתי מקום. I have a reservation. הזמנתי מקום. I have a reservation. So this one you can use in both restaurants or hotels or, you know, whenever you make a reservation to. Sometimes it could even be a bus. So that's really useful. אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu, please? אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu, please? Yeah, sometimes they just forget, like they sit, they sit you down, you're at the table, sometimes they'll even give you water and no menu, so that's kind of funny. יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? So, I think, like, in Israel, generally, if you ask the waiter if he has recommendations, then he will tell you what he personally likes, um, whereas in other places, they would, like, Oh, do you have recommendations? And they'll tell you, yeah, this and this is very popular. So, I don't know what you guys prefer, but I kind of prefer the waiter's own preference because he probably ate all of the dishes in the menu and he knows what up, you know. אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? Yeah, or you can just like... And I think that's like an international thing, you know. Check, please. But you'll be surprised to some countries. אני אלרגי לבוטנים. I'm allergic to peanuts. אני אלרגי לבוטנים. I'm allergic to peanuts. That's really important if you're going to restaurants and if you have any sorts of allergies. So you should mention that and you should really make it clear. And funny story, I found out that in Israel, There are much less peanut allergies than any other place in the world because there's a peanut snack that parents just shove to their kids since they're like zero age, and apparently that kind of immunes them towards peanut allergies, and it's very rare, so yay. Mine bevakasha. Water, please. Mine bevakasha. Water, please. Yeah, water in restaurants. You should know that it, you're always supposed to get tap water for free, so remember that. כמה זה עולה? How much is this? כמה זה עולה? How much is this? Also a very useful phrase. You can ask that when you're doing shopping and clothes and like when you're buying tickets for something. So useful. אני רוצה עשרה כאלה. 
I'd like ten of these. אני רוצה עשרה כאלה. I'd like ten of these. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought ten of anything. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. So out of all the things, this is the thing you want. And you should emphasize, when you say that, you should emphasize the word זה. It. This. אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? Now this one you should always say with a smile on your face. And another way of saying it in Hebrew, which is a little bit more common and a little bit more casual, is instead of, instead of the verb לתת, to give, you use the verb לעשות, to do. אתה יכול לעשות לי הנחה? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit card? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit cards? Again, usually yes. Um, another very useful thing to ask with credit cards is if you can put, like, the tip in a restaurant, if you can put that on the credit card as well. And when you want to ask that, you'd say, אפשר טיפ באשראי? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where's the train station? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where's the train station? I feel like this sentence is more useful in places when you have, like, An underground train, uh, whereas in Israel you have like a train that goes between cities, but sometimes you need to take that to the airport, so it's good to ask. Slicha, kama ola nesia? Excuse me, what's the fare? Slicha, kama ola nesia? Excuse me, what's the fare? I guess you'd ask that probably only on a bus in Israel and not in any other place. אתה יכול לצלם אותי בבקשה? Could you take a picture of me, please? אתה יכול לצלם אותי בבקשה? Could you take a picture of me, please? Yeah, so if you're not that much into selfies or you'd want to get a more panoramic or wide view of what's behind you, then ask somebody, don't be shy. Okay, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching Hebrew Top Words. We spoke about 20 travel phrases that you should know. Please let me know down below if there's anything else that you want to know and what do you commonly use and if you have a funny story for when you were abroad. I'd love to read all of your comments. Don't forget to like up this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check up HebrewPod101.com for more content, more videos, and more Hebrew. I'll see you next time. Bye. Shalom. Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. אני אוהב אותך. אני אוהב אותך. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. אתה כל כך חשוב לי. אתה כל כך חשוב לי. It means, you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. It means, words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Hebrew. And here's one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, you can say, Hatihiye ben zugi bechag ha'ahava. Hatihiye ben zugi bechag ha'ahava. It means, will you be my Valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. אני אוהב אותך.
אני אוהב אותך. You mean so much to me. אתה כל כך חשוב לי. אתה כל כך חשוב לי. Words cannot describe my love for you. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. Will you be my valentine? התהיה בן זוגי בחג האהבה? התהיה בן זוגי בחג האהבה? Well done! Here's a fun fact. According to Jewish tradition, on Tu Be'av, or the Jewish celebration of love, Jewish girls would go out to dance in borrowed clothes. Do you know why? Jewish girls would go out to the vineyards wearing borrowed white clothes. The clothes were borrowed so that no one could distinguish between the poor and the wealthy, so as not to embarrass anyone. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Hebrew and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. I'll see you next time. Toda raba! Should I... <laughs> Wonderful wine. Okay, nice. <laughs> take it, darling. It looks fabulous in you. Come on, please, take it. Please. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, wow, I like, can't oh believe God. it. Do you know 17 ways to wear a scarf? Because I do. <laughs> I told you I could do this all day. <laughs> that was a fail. Uh, no, yeah. yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this money. Do you want some money? I'll give you. Oh, that's what the young people are doing today, right? <laughs> I'm just a person. Hi everybody, Edith here. Uh, welcome back and today we're gonna learn top 10 phrases you'll need for a date. <laughs> also, I want to mention that I will speak as a woman inviting a man out. So all of those phrases will be addressed towards a male. Let's begin. Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Yeah, I think like dinner is a more mature kind of a date. I think it's either if you're more far along in your, like, your relationship, like you're, maybe you're a bit more mature and you have more money, <laughs> um, but most people maybe would just go out for like a coffee or a beer. Would you like to hang out with me? Would you like to hang out with me? I think this is like a very kind of a, a vague, obscure kind of a way to ask somebody to do something with you. Like, it's nice to hang out, but you know, be more specific. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to have frozen yogurt? Do you want to like... buy a dress? <laughs> Do you want to go to the movies? Like, you know, don't be so vague. אתה כל כך חמוד. You're so cute. אתה כל כך חמוד. You're so cute. So in Hebrew, when we say the equivalent of cute, which is חמוד, it's kind of like friend zoning somebody, as a matter of fact. It's not like, mm, cute, like he's handsome, like in English. It's just like saying cute to a dog. And there's also a saying a guy would say, call a dog cute, like I'm not cute, I'm a man. So if you're a woman and you're telling a guy he's cute, that's not a compliment. <laughs> you look great. You look great. You know, sometimes like when well, you see your dad, he just comes over and he really looks sharp. It's like, oh, you look great. Yeah. That was a great evening. That was a great evening. Don't say it if you just had like an okay kind of a time. Because the word nehedar in Hebrew, it means actually like, you know, great, like fantastic. And if you really had a fantastic time and you're not trying to like play it cool and you really wanted him to know that you had a good time, um, then, then say that. But if you're trying to be cool, you know, say something maybe a bit more mild. I'll call you. I'll call you. Now guys, especially guys, 
Don't say it if you don't mean it. Just say, it was great seeing you. Okay, bye. That's good enough. אני אסיע אותך הביתה. I'll drive you home. אני אסיע אותך הביתה. I'll drive you home. Not if you had drinks. If you had dinner, you know, a soft drink, then sure, you know, drive him home. Why not? Show him your driving skills. באיזו שעה אתה רוצה להיפגש מחר? What time shall we meet tomorrow? באיזו שעה אתה רוצה להיפגש מחר? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Um, again, this is like very useful. We just, we, you said tomorrow, but you don't really know exactly when. Is it seven? Is it eight? Is it eight? And then just be more specific and ask him what time. רוצה להיפגש שוב? Can I see you again? רוצה להיפגש שוב? Can I see you again? Yeah, it's like a very direct thing to ask. I don't think I've ever asked it anybody. And you don't really have to, you just can like, yeah, okay, I'll call you or, you know, or call me. If it's really important to you and, you know, you're not playing any games and you're all being like really straightforward and simple, then you might say, Can I see you again? Shall we go somewhere else? Shall we go somewhere else? You know, if the bar is too loud or, you know, maybe smelly from cigarettes, or maybe the restaurant you wanted to go to is there's a bit of a line, um, and you're thinking, okay, let's not waste our time, and maybe you can find some place that's more comfortable, then you'd ask that, like, Okay, so thank you, everybody. Today we learned about top 10 phrases you'll need for a date. I hope you have many successful ones, And if you're already in a relationship, you know, just skip the video. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like up this video. And don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Lay thought. You are at a train station platform where you are waiting for your train. There's a small pamphlet sitting on a display case about a new train that will be introduced next year. You decide to pick up and read the pamphlet. What is the main feature and the biggest advantage of the new train? What is the main feature and the biggest advantage of the new train? The main feature of the train is that it is propelled by magnetism. The biggest advantage is that it can reach twice the speeds of any train that runs on tracks. של הרכבת הוא שהיא מונעת על ידי מגנטיות. היא יכולה להגיע למהירות כפולה מזו של רכבת שנוסעת על פסים. Hello everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we are going to talk about the five biggest festivals in Israel. Let's start. Midburn. 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 השנה לא השגתי כרטיס למידברן. This year I didn't get a ticket to Midburn. I actually have never been to Midburn, but it sounds kind of awesome. The meaning of the name is like in the middle. It's in the middle, but it's burning. It's in the desert. Midburn. It's supposed to be like Coachella, I think. It's like the Israeli version of Coachella. It kind of looks like a, a huge village with... Weird art installments and people are dressed with like, you know, sparkles and sequins and stuff. Uh, it's actually, it's supposed to be really fun. Um, I don't think it's an international festival, but I, maybe there are a few bands from outside of Israel who are performing there. Um, sometimes it's getting bigger every year, of course. And I hope to go one day if I get the chance and the guts. <laughs> Indi Negev. Indi Negev. אינדי נגב. אינדי נגב. האינדי נגב נערך כל שנה בסתיו. The Indy Negev is held every year in autumn. 
I've actually been to the Indie Negev. It's also a music festival for indie bands, and it's held in the Negev, which is the desert in southern Israel. And if you have the chance to go, it start. It, usually, it's right before the beginning of the um, school year in universities and colleges, so you can have like one last huzzah uh, before you start <laughs> school again. So it's nice. Festival Hajez Bayam Haadom. Red Sea Jazz Festival. Festival Hajez Bayam Haadom. Red Sea Jazz Festival. Jazz Bayam Haadom, who a rua musica ben leumi. The Red Sea Jazz Festival is an international music event. Um, yeah, I think the Red Sea Jazz Festival is the most famous uh, festival, music festival in Israel. And it's true that artists come from all over the world. I've been there once when I was 17 uh, with my brother. It was actually pretty awesome, even though I really hate jazz. <laughs> Sorry, I do. Festival Arad. Arad Festival. Festival Arad. Arad Festival. Festival Arad who mehavetikim b'Israel. The Arad Festival is one of the oldest in Israel. Um, it's true, I think the Arad Festival started like back at the 70s. I think there was a very long time when it didn't happen, but then it kind of started going again, started running again, which is nice. I don't know if you guys noticed, but most of the festivals in Israel are being held down south, the desert, even Eilat, which is the southest point. I guess it's just like there's more space. <laughs> Makes sense. Festival Machol Carmiel. Carmiel Dance Festival. Festival Machol Carmiel. Carmiel Dance Festival. Leohavei Machol Mumlatz Lehagia Le Festival Bekarmiel. For dance lovers, it is recommended to go to the Carmel Dance Festival. So I think generally dance festivals are not quite as popular, so that's why this one is being held up north, <laughs> which is generally a little bit more, like, you don't have that many open spaces there. Um, but what can you do? I think people are more into music than dance, generally. Okay, everybody, that's it. Today we've talked about the five biggest festivals in Israel. Uh, let me know in the comments below about your festival experiences and if you've ever been to one of the festivals in Israel. Um, all right, and don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more content, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, Litot! <laughs> <laughs>This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need, with a range of topics, from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go! Number 5. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. 
And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Shalom everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And today we are going to talk about 15 must-know family words. Let's get started. Mishpacha, family. Mishpacha, family. Zot munasha mishpachti. This is a picture of my family. Av, Abba, father. Av, Abba, father. Miha Abba shel Mario. Who is Mario's father? So in Hebrew, there are basically two ways for saying father or dad. And one of them is Abba, which is the more natural one, a normal one that people use. And it can mean dad or daddy or father also. It's like a real word. It's not just like daddy. Um, and Av is a little bit more biblical and more formal. And people don't usually use it, but it's still, it's an important word to know. Obviously, both of the words are very close with just the difference of one letter in the end. Um, so you can understand, but just so you'll know that av is a bit more serious, I guess. Baal, husband. Baal, husband. Baali ahuv mevashel bishvili. My beloved husband is cooking for me. So, actually now a lot of women, and especially I guess feminist women, um, don't want to use the word Baal anymore because it it is it does come from the word owner, and of course, yes, it comes from the Bible, and back then men used to own women, but since we don't live at that time anymore, uh, many women just don't say that word anymore, and they say uh, an equivalent to my man, which is ishi, ben, son, ben, son, haben sheli, student baunivarsita. My son is a university student. This is really easy. The word for son in Hebrew is just the same as the word for boy. Um, ben. Ach. Brother. Ach. Brother. Le'aba sheli yesh losha achim. My father has three brothers. This is also like a very easy word. Ach. If you got your chets right, then you'll be fine. Dod. Uncle. Dod. Uncle. Hadod sheli rofe. My uncle is a doctor. Another interesting like factoid is that the word dod in the Bible doesn't only mean uncle, but sometimes it's used as meaning my love, um, especially in the Song of Songs and uh, Salmi. But it doesn't have anything to do like the word uncle and the word my love or lover has any nothing to do with each other. So Saba. Grandfather. Saba. Grandfather. Yarashti tashaonaze mi saba sheli. I inherited this clock from my grandfather. So, as you can see, most of the words in Hebrew for, like, family members are quite short and easy because you use them a lot. <laughs> um, family is very important in Jewish culture and in Israeli culture. It's a very, it's a very family oriented culture, I guess. So, yeah, like even the words for dad and granddad are very similar. It's Abba and Saba. M. Ima. Mother. M. Ima. Mother. Ima ve Abba sheli hayunasuim chamishim shana. My mother and father were married for 50 years. So again, for the word for mom or mother, the word Ima is more common and used as mom, mommy, mother. And the word M, again, is more biblical, it's shorter, it's more official. Um, just the same as we've learned about father. Bat, daughter. Bat, daughter. Habat shelanu professorit baunivarsita, vehaben shelanu isha sakim. Our daughter is a university professor, and our son is a businessman. Again, very easy, the word for daughter is just the same as the word for girl. Bat, achot. Sister. Achot. Sister. Hi achot agdola sheli, vhi orechet din. She is my older sister and she's a lawyer. Achot, as you can probably tell, sounds very similar to ach, just 
with a suffix for female. Isha, wife. Isha, wife. He isha ve'em. She's a wife and a mother. The word for wife is the same as the word for woman. It's very simple. Um, it's like, she's my woman, she's my wife. It's the same. Um, and when a man says my wife, he would say the most common way to hear it is ishti. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Al titen lechama shtaltanit lirdot becha. Don't be pushed around by an overbearing mother-in-law. It's not just the mothers, everybody, okay? Also, there are two words for the word mother-in-law, and they're very similar. Chama and chamot. And they're both used kind of, you know, interchangeably. Savta. Grandmother. Savta. Grandmother. Savta machina et paya tapuchim atov ba'olam. My grandmother makes the best apple pie in the world. Well, I guess American grandmothers. <laughs> My grandmother made the best rice casserole in the world. <laughs> Bat Zug. Ben Zug. Partner. Bat Zug. Ben Zug. Partner. Harbe gvarim tseirim mechapsim bat zug. Many young men are looking for a partner. So in Hebrew, again, you always have the difference between male and female, unlike English when partner can be both male and female. So when you're talking about a boy partner, it's ben zug, and a girl partner is bat zug. Um, like we've learned that ben is boy and bat is girl and also daughter and ben is also son. It's very, <laughs> very simple. Doda. Aunt. Doda. Aunt. Hadoda Shali Ohevet Prachim Tsubim. My aunt likes yellow flowers. Sometimes we use the word for aunt in Hebrew also when we see just like a woman who's a little bit older, maybe like in her fifties, and she seems to you know have this older woman vibe, or when we say about somebody that she dresses older from her age or puts a makeup that makes her look older than her true age, then we can say that she looks like a doda, she looks like an aunt. Um, I don't know why that is, but actually I think that's a very accurate way to say it, like, oh yeah, she looks like a tall aunt. So, yeah. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Today we've learned about 15 must-know family words in Hebrew. Please let me know in the comments below. Tell me about your family and who is your favorite family member. And don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, and check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more contents. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi, everybody. I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. In this lesson, you learn some important phrases for Hanukkah in Israel and some valuable cultural tips. In Hebrew, Hanukkah is called Chanukah. Chanukah. Jewish people don't observe Western Christmas. Instead, Hanukkah, or the Festival of Lights, is celebrated over eight days in November or December each year. Hanukkah commemorates the rededication of the second Jewish temple in Jerusalem. On Hanukkah, or Hanukkah, Israeli people greet each other by saying Hanukkah Sameach. Hanukkah Sameach. It means Happy Hanukkah. When you meet someone on Hanukkah, be sure to greet them with this phrase. Chanukah Sameach! Chanukah Sameach! Jewish people celebrate the holiday with special events and customs. The most popular food to eat during Hanukkah is... Leviva. Leviva. It means potato cake. For Hanukkah, fried potato cakes are a traditional dish. These deliciously crispy cakes are served with sour cream and applesauce. Contemporary recipes feature alternative ingredients, such as pumpkin, cauliflower, and a special Moroccan spice blend.
let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the words and repeat after me. Hanukkah Chanukah Chanukah Happy Hanukkah Chanukah Sameach Chanukah Sameach Potato cake Leviva Leviva Well done! Here's a fun fact. Do you know a special custom Jewish people observe over Hanukkah? Over the eight days of Hanukkah, a candle is lit each day on a special candle holder called the Chanukiah. That's it! You just learned about how Israeli people celebrate Hanukkah and some important facts about the holiday. Jewish people don't... Sorry, I like... My eyes bounced. My name is Hermione Granger. <laughs> you just got off the train at the closest station to your friend's new house, where he's invited you to a party. Which exit should you use to get to your friend's new house? Which exit should you use to get to your friend's new house? Although the east exit would have normally been the closest exit, it's currently under construction, so you should take the south exit instead. Let's by Hadromit. Shalom everybody, Edith here. This is Hebrew Top Words and today we're going to talk about top 10 must-know vocabulary for the restaurant. Let's start. Melzau, waiter. Melzau, waiter. Ha'adon noten tip la melzau. The gentleman is tipping the waiter. So the word adon is not very much used in Hebrew, even less than the word gentleman in English. It's just that Hebrew got to be so casual with the years that people hardly ever use these words anymore. And it's kind of a funny thing to say, but it's still a word that you should know. You will encounter it in maybe even in the newspapers or in books, obviously. So yeah, it's good to know. Melzarit, waitress. Melzarit. Waitress. Talia melzarit ba misadai talkit. Talia is a waitress in an Italian restaurant. Now this is a much more realistic phrase, like in English, which is not something that happens very often. You have a different word for a male and a female doing the same thing. A waiter is melzar and a waitress melzarit. Tafrit. Menu. Tafrit. Menu. If Charlie wrote a tafrit bevakasha, can I see the menu, please? Um, this is just like a very useful sentence for a restaurant because I'm always that person that takes forever to choose. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I am. So just let me see the menu, okay? Unless it's some place that I go like every day or like a lot or often, I, I'm like sitting in front of the menu like. But I'm a good chooser, I have to admit. I like, when I, when I get my dish, everybody's like, oh. Hazmana, order. Hazmana, 
order. התקשר כדי לבצע הזמנה. Call to place an order. So the word for Hebrew הזמנה can also mean a reservation. It can also mean the order that you're taking when you're sitting at the restaurant. And it can also be like a takeaway order that you do by the phone. Very useful word. מים water מים water תשתה מים כל יום drink water every day well of course but not just every day you have to like drink like three liters of water every day especially now during summer and you can get tap water for free in any restaurant or bar in Israel so you should just know that I think like that's a law or something that you're allowed to get free water chef 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 a chef machinetamana the chef is preparing the dish is there any language where a chef is not a chef like I'm, chef chef miss <laughs> ada restaurant miss ada restaurant he went to a restaurant after work um so the word miss ada is from the word sa'ad, which means to eat or to have a meal. Khishbon, bill. Khishbon, bill. Miltar, a khishbon. Waiter, the bill. Um, the word khishbon in Hebrew also means maths. <laughs> because you have to do the maths to know how much you pay, right? So it just makes sense. So, waiter, the maths. Taim, delicious. Taim, delicious. Schug im gvina levana alechem, ze taim meot. Schug with white cheese on bread is very delicious. Yes, it is, if you like spicy food. Manai karit, main course. Manai karit, main course. Ha manai karit ha erev, hidaga la ish. Tonight's main course is grilled fish. Okay, everybody, that's it. Today we talked about 15 must-know vocabulary for the restaurant. Let me know in the comments below about your experiences at restaurants. Good ones, bad ones, funny ones. I sure have a lot of embarrassing ones. So <laughs> let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, and check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more content, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, shalom. Hello everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And this week we're going to talk about top 10 phrases your parents always say. Let's get started. Tizaher lecha. Be careful. That's like, you're walking on thin ice, buddy. Be careful. Just a disclaimer, my parents never said those things to me because I was an amazing child. But I do have two brothers and, you know. Tiye b'sheket. Be quiet. I wish just everybody, right? Just everybody to be quiet. Titneg yafe. Behave. That's like, I think it's not such a bad thing to say. It's like, oh, well, you know, be nice. Even though your friend is a total weirdo, weirdo who eats his boogers, just be nice. Aset shiurea bait shalcha. Do your homework. No TV before you finish. Lech lishon. Go to bed. Just a little bit of formaldehyde and just <sniffs> sound asleep. Ani soferet ad shalosh. I'm going to count to three. And what? Like nobody ever follows that threat. Atso. Stop. Um, this stop is also like in traffic, like stop, just, yeah. Mamata? What did you say? <laughs> um, this is like a classic passive aggressive mother of like, like, oh, yeah, do you want to say that again? You want to say it to my face? Mm, yeah. Ani lo tzachaket. I'm not kidding. Why would your child think you're kidding? Nobody, nobody's ever kidding. Kabeta televizia achshav. Turn the TV off now. I think probably today it's not so much the TV anymore as like iPad, iPhone, what is it, that thing, Nintendo? I, I don't know. The Switch? Yeah, the S Nintendo Switch, yes. Put your Nintendo Switch down. Just they can just say, put that thing down.
Okay, everybody, that's it. We did top 10 phrases your parents always say. Let me know in the comments below some of the gems that your parents say to you. Um, I wouldn't know again, but <laughs> let me know. I think it's hilarious. And yeah, don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, check out Hebrew Pod 101 for more content, more Hebrew, and I'll see you all next time. Shalom! Learning a language requires a huge investment of time and often money as well. Many people are hesitant to put in the amount of effort required to become fluent. But learning a new language can be one of life's most rewarding experiences. Here are five reasons to learn a language. Number one, more opportunities. A new language can open up many new doors. You're able to work in countries other than your own. Tons of employers look to hire multilingual professionals every year. Number two, meeting new people. Get to know speakers of other languages on a more personal level. Meeting new people is one of the main reasons people begin to study a language. Making new friends is a good enough reason to start studying. Number three, exploring a different culture. Whether you decide to live abroad or you're just taking a vacation, knowing the local language will allow you to better understand the people. This can open your eyes to not only their country, but your country as well. Learn how people view your home from their perspective. Number four, health benefits. Studying a new language actually comes with health benefits. Keep your brain sharp by studying every day. You'll be helping your mind fight off old age and stay fresh. Number five, discover you can do it. We've heard every excuse that people give for failing to learn a new language. Too old, not enough time, wrong genes. But you shouldn't let your excuses hold you back. You really can learn another language. You could even hold your first conversation just a few days from now. Don't make any more excuses. Just click to start speaking the language you've always wanted to learn. Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Stop hesitating and start learning a new language now. Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Shalom everybody, you did here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And today we are going to talk about the 10 top tourist attractions in Israel. Ah, let's begin. Eilat. 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 בחודשי הקיץ, הטמפרטורה באילת גבוהה מאוד. In the summer months, the temperature is very high in Eilat. That's true, it's a desert area, but also it's dry heat, so it's not as bad. It's very dry, so you don't sweat as much, but you do have to be careful not to dehydrate and also, you know, protect yourself from the UV rays. Um, but it's nice. Yam HaMelach, Dead Sea. Yam HaMelach, the Dead Sea. Me Yam HaMelach Meluchim Me'od. Dead Sea water is very salty. So in Hebrew, actually, the name is not the Dead Sea, but actually the Salt Sea, uh, which makes sense. It has an extremely high percent of salt and like phosphates, I guess, and other type of minerals. It's supposed to be very healthy for your body, unless you have any open wounds, which in that case, mm -mm. ow. But it is very healthy. The sun doesn't, they say that the, because it's so low beneath the sea level that the sun doesn't hit there the same as other places. So we don't get as much UV um, as you do in places that are sea level or up, which somehow makes sense, but I wouldn't take the chance and I would still put on a lot of cream. Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. בירושלים חיים למעלה מ-800,000 תושבים. There are more than 800,000 inhabitants living in Jerusalem. I guess so. Uh, I've never checked. It is a very interesting city. There is a lot to do there. Um, even if you're not into all the religious things, it's a nice place to visit, to hang around. They have some really awesome cafes, cool universities, cool subculture. Um, yeah, it's nice. Kinneret, the Sea of Galilee. Kinneret, 
the Sea of Galilee. רכבנו סביב הכנרת. We rode around the Sea of Galilee. Yeah, that's a, a very beautiful area right there. Um, I think one of my favorite places to go, if I want to go to like a resort in Israel, is around there. Um, even though down south at the desert they have really interesting stuff too. It's a lovely place. Unfortunately, sometimes it gets smaller and smaller because it doesn't rain so much in Israel sometimes. But it's okay. We're doing okay. It's fun. You can do like marine sports there too. Um, yeah, cool place. Machtesh Ramon. Machtesh Ramon. Machtesh Ramon. Machtesh Ramon. Machtesh Ramon hua machtesh agadol b'Yisrael. Machtesh Ramon is the largest crater in Israel. Honestly, I think it's also the largest natural crater in the world. I know that geologists go there all the time to do research and like seminars and stuff like that. It's supposed to be a super interesting place. I personally have never been, maybe because my parents were too concerned about my allergies, which it makes sense every time I go to the desert, they just flare up. Um, <laughs> but it's an amazing place and you should visit. Metzada. Masada. Metzada. Masada. Le Metzada, sipur histori manien. Masada has an interesting historical story. Don't ask me about it. I'm not that good in history. I'm good in biology. Um, <laughs> but it is very interesting to go there. Um, you see a lot of things that were amazingly preserved because of the dry weather over there. It is in the desert. Every time I went, I got allergies again. Um, so I didn't went there a lot, but it is interesting. And sometimes you can also have amazing concerts there at night. And because of the ancient buildings and ancient, you know, ruins and you see all the lights and you get like this opera show or something, it's very intense. Caesarea, 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 Caesarea. Be Caesarea notus redim rabim mit kufata romaim. In Caesarea, there are many relics from the Roman era. That's true, it's also another very interesting historical place. It's also very beautiful, very romantic. Some people get married there. Um, there is, I think, even a golf course somewhere around there. They have a lot of very expensive neighborhood that um, there are the homes of the richest people in Israel. And it's a beautiful place. Yeah, you should go, definitely. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv hi ir modernit vetoseset. Tel Aviv is a modern, vibrant city. Yeah, well, that's my favorite place in Israel, obviously. This is where I was born and raised. It's a beautiful place. It's an awesome place. There's lots to do. Great food. A lot of hipsters. I love hipsters. Um, and yeah, it's great. If you want to have fun, go to parties, go to the beach, meet new people. Um, that's the place. Yafo. Jaffa. Yafo. Jaffa. Yafo hi ir namal atika. Jaffa is an old port city. So actually Tel Aviv and Jaffa are the same jurisdiction, it's the same city. Um, Yafo is beautiful, there are many things to do there. Um, the flea market and the beach and Andromeda's what rock and you have some restaurants there and you have the old city and I remember actually, beautiful memory, when I was in the second grade, we had like um, a sunrise tour. So it started like around 3 a.m. We started walking through the streets of Old Town Jaffa and then we like stood on some hill somewhere and saw the sunrise and it was amazing. It was my first time for me in my life to see the sunrise. It was beautiful. Sdeboker. 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 משדה בוקר ניתן לצאת לטיולים במדבר. From שדה בוקר you can go on desert hikes. Everything that I can't do, desert and hikes. Um, it is a, an interesting place. The first prime minister of Israel used to live there, so you can see the little hut, shack, that he used to live in. It teaches you a lesson about modesty and, you know, being satisfied with only having you know, small place to live, small things, not nothing fancy. Um, yeah. 
Okay, everybody, that's it. These are the top 10 tourist attractions in Israel. Please let me know in the comments below if you've visited any of them. Where would you want to go first? Um, if there's anything that we forgot to mention that is very important that you love to go. And yeah, that's it. Don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, and don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more content, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, shalom. You are at a train station where you're heading to the lost and found office to retrieve a lost passport. According to an email you received from the train company, what things do you need to provide to the staff? What things do you need to provide to the staff? The email says that you need to present proof of identification and to pay a small fee. Teuda mezaha tashlum simli. Shalom everybody, Did here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we are going to talk about top 10 ways to prepare for your travel. Let's begin. Livchor Yad, to choose your destination. Livchor Yad, to choose your destination. Kvar bacharta Yad latiyul? Have you chosen your destination yet? What's your next destination to travel? I think mine would probably be Australia. Or Spain. <laughs> Either way. Liknot madrich tiulim. To buy a guidebook. Liknot madrich tiulim. To buy a guidebook. Kaniti madrich tiulim im hamlatsot mitsuyanot. I bought a guidebook with excellent recommendations. When I had my, like, my trip to Thailand after I finished the army, I was 21, that was six years ago. I still used like a book from one of those really famous companies that do like guidebooks. But now wherever I go, I don't even use a book anymore. I just use the internet. And even when I'm at the place, I use the internet for like recommendations and I use Yelp. So it's amazing like in less than 10 years, like just six years, how things have changed. Um, that's pretty unbelievable. Lachsoch kesef, to save money. To save money. I'm saving money for two years now. Um, well, I guess that depends where you want to go. Maybe some places you don't have to save as much money, or maybe if it's just a short trip. You should be comfortable when you travel and have enough money to spend on things that you want and have nice dinners. And so it's better to have it more further apart, I guess, and just be okay with the money, then like go every year and just be like very skimgy about it. That's my opinion. Lehazmin tisa, to book a flight. Lehazmin tisa, to book a flight. Hezmanti tisa yashira Tel Aviv. I booked a direct flight to Tel Aviv. Um, I don't want to like throw shade, but choose the companies that you fly with, the airlines that you fly with, carefully. Levarer odot aluyot. To research the costs. Levarer odot aluyot. To research the costs. Ha'im birata odot aluyot mazon velina? Have you already researched accommodation and food costs? So yeah, that's like super important. Sometimes you go to places and you don't realize how much money you're going to spend on food. Accommodations you usually know because you order it in advance in most places. But with food, just can be a, can be a mystery. Lehazmin mekomot lina. To book accommodations. Lehazmin mekomot lina. To book accommodations. 
בעונת התיירות חשוב להזמין מקומות לינה מראש. During the touristic season, it's important to book accommodations ahead. Oh, that's very true. Of course, now it might be a bit easier with like Airbnb and stuff like that. But still, like, when there is no place to sleep, there is no place to sleep. לחדש דרכון To renew your passport. לחדש דרכון To renew your passport. אם הדרכון פג תוקף, חשוב לחדש אותו. If your passport is expired, it's important to renew it. It happened to me, some countries request for at least six months um, left on your passport before you go. Like, if you have five months before it's expired or like four or less than that, you won't be able to enter the country. And I didn't know that for some place and that happened to me. It's really bad. So even if you have like another six months left on your passport, renew it anyway. Les roses, to pack. Les roses, to pack. אני מתכננת les roses בלילה לפני הטיסה. I'm planning to pack on the night before the flight. Well, if you're very used to it, then that, that's not a problem. But if you're not using to pack your things, maybe you should start before and not just the night before you go. Some people have like an already made list of the things that they always take with them. But people who don't travel quite as much, They don't have it, so don't do it like just the night before. Like, plan ahead, guys, okay? And don't just throw anything in the luggage anyway, okay? Like, this is re- No. Put it in an orderly fashion, please, please. לרכוש ביטוח נסיעות To buy travel insurance. לרכוש ביטוח נסיעות To buy travel insurance. לכל צרה שלא תבוא, כדאי לרכוש ביטוח נסיעות. For any travel, it's better to buy travel's insurance. I have to admit I don't usually do that. Unless I go for a really long time. But I don't usually do that. להוציא ויזה. To get a visa. להוציא ויזה. To get a visa. לארצות מסוימות צריך להוציא ויזה מראש. For several countries, you must get a visa in advance. Especially the US, I think that's a super long process. So you should start doing that at least six months before you plan on going. Some other places too, I guess. Just make sure, like, what are the demands of that, of your destination country from your passport country, I guess. Okay, everybody, that's it. Today we've talked about 10 top ways to prepare for your travel. Let me know in the comments below if you have any tips, tricks, or any, like, funny stories from your traveling, if you travel to Israel or anywhere else, something, like, really amusing that happened that you can never forget. Um, don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, check out HebrewPod101.com for more content, more Hebrew, and I'll see you all next time. Hello everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about top 10 phrases to know when having a baby. Ah, let's get started. Lehanik, to breastfeed. Lehanik, to breastfeed. Lehanik hi peula shegever leolam lo yuchal argish. No man would understand how it feels to breastfeed. Yeah, I guess not. Maybe technology someday, you know, maybe. להחליף חיתול To change a diaper להחליף חיתול To change a diaper שני ההורים צריכים לדעת איך להחליף חיתול Both parents should know how to change a diaper. דה להלביש סינר To put on a bib להלביש סינר To put on a bib תראה איך הוא מלכלך את החולצה. תלביש לו סינר. Look how he's messing his shirt. Put a bib on him. It all goes to the laundry anyway, just whatever. You're gonna change his clothes ten times a day anyway, no? להחליף בגדים. To change clothes. להחליף בגדים. To change clothes. אין דבר. נחליף לו בגדים אחר כך. It's okay. We'll change his clothes later. It's exactly what I said. לשיר שיר ארס To sing a lullaby. לשיר שיר ארס To sing a lullaby. הילד שלי לא נרדם מבלי ששרים לו שיר ארס. My kid doesn't fall asleep without a lullaby. 
my dad used to sing me lullabies when I was like a kid, and he chose the most horrific songs and he thought I wouldn't understand like the words that he's saying or the lyrics, but I did and I was traumatized and I'm still afraid of clowns till this day. So yeah. It was about like a clown in the circus and his father was um, a contortionist and then one day he fell off the trapeze and broke his neck, but the, the kid who was a clown had to keep on smiling because that was his job but nobody knew that he was crying from inside. It's just horrible. Shemesh Ola Yoret Gam Halel Achal Eitzan Od Mamshich Vetzohel Shivers. Lenam Nem To take a nap. Lenam Nem To take a nap. Tinokot Rabim Nohagim Lenam Nem Achar Hatsaraim Many babies take a nap during the afternoon. And me, Liknot Moshav Laoto, to buy a car seat. Liknot Moshav Laoto, to buy a car seat. Od Lifne Haleida, Chashuv Liknot Moshav Laoto. Even before birth, it's important to buy a car seat and, you know, check that it's up to the highest safety standards and stuff because it's super important. Leha'achil. To feed, להאכיל, to feed, התינוקת עצבנית, כדאי להאכיל אותה בקרוב. The baby girl is cranky. We should feed her soon. I know this as hangry. <laughs> I, get, I get to be that a lot. להסיע עגלה, to push a stroller. להסיע עגלה, to push a stroller. התינוקת שלי נהנית כשאני מסיעה אותה בעגלה. My baby enjoys it when I push her in the stroller. Yeah, I think that's a good way to make babies fall asleep, right? Just like the vibrations. להקריא סיפור. To read a story. להקריא סיפור. To read a story. האם מקריאה סיפור לילדים. The mother reads a story to the children. Yeah, that was my favorite when I was a girl. I still love stories till, the, till this day. Okay, guys, that's it. This was top 10 phrases to know when having a baby. Let me know in the comments below, do you have a baby? Um, if you have like a funny story about being a new parent, I am not a parent yet, so I think maybe it could help me out. And don't forget to check out Hebrew Pod 101 for more Hebrew, more content, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Just buy baby food. Why make baby food? Just, it comes in a little can. Tastes good. I tried it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Did here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And today we are going to talk about top 10 phrases tourists should never say. Let's get started. Zemagil. That's disgusting. Zemagil. That's disgusting. It's just, what? Don't say that ever <laughs> about anything. Just, no. You can think it. You can, don't say it. Hamedina sheli yoter tova. My country is better. Hamedina sheli yoter tova. My country is better. Sad. Just sad. Haiti ma'adif lihiyot babait. I'd rather be back home. Haiti ma'adif lihiyot babait. I'd rather be back home. Why even li travel or leave your house if you'd just rather be home? It's weird. Stom et ape. Shut up. Stom et ape. Shut up. Don't. <laughs> Super rude. It's like, it's embarrassing for me to even say it. Um, but I guess it's a useful phrase in Hebrew because sometimes you don't say it like to people that you don't know. Sometimes you use it in an argument and uh, um, that could be okay. I'm not very interested in your culture. I'm not very interested in your culture. 
Again, why travel if you're not interested in other people's cultures? <laughs> אני לא אוהב לפגוש אנשים חדשים. I don't like meeting new people. אני לא אוהב לפגוש אנשים חדשים. I don't like meeting new people. אוקיי. That's such a bad thing. You can learn so much from new people. And even if you don't like them, you just become a better person just by the fact that you had to pretend to be nice. So, I think... Yeah, you know, just meet new people sometimes. בואו פשוט נאכל במקדונלדס. Let's just eat at McDonald's. בואו פשוט נאכל במקדונלדס. Let's just go eat at McDonald's. That's really offensive. Like, just McDonald's in itself is offensive. Just don't, don't do that to your bodies, okay? No matter where you are. Unless you're really in dire straits. It's better than not eating. Mishamem. Boring. Mishamem. Boring. This one's useful. Not when you're traveling, but it's useful. Yesh leze ta'am nora'i. This tastes awful. Yesh leze ta'am nora'i. This tastes awful. Just don't say it, but don't eat it. אני מתכוון לבלות את היום בבית המלון. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. אני מתכוון לבלות את היום בבית המלון. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. If you're at a resort, that's okay. No? Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody, that's it. Those were the top 10 phrases tourists should never say. Um, please don't ever say them to anybody. And let me know in the comments down below if anybody have ever been super rude towards you or even like, you know, kind of um, secretly rude, you know, trying to hide it. And don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more content, more Hebrew. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Shalom everybody, Edith here. <laughs> okay, did you help? <laughs> Strong independent woman. Okay. Shalom everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we are going to talk about your top 10 language learning goals for the year. Let's start. Asayem et sidrat bitoyei ha-isardut behebrewpod101.com al yedei kach she'akshiv l'shnei shiurim midei yom. I'll finish Survival Phrases series on HebrewPod101.com by listening to two lessons a day. So the Survival series is pretty much like the most basic things that you need to know if you're going even just to visit Israel, not even if you're just like going to move or do an aliyah. If you're just going to visit, the Survival Phrases would really help you get around, and that's really important, so do that. Asayem likro sefer beivrit על ידי כך שאקרא עשרה עמודים ביום. I'll finish reading one Hebrew book by reading 10 pages a day. So I think reading 10 pages a day is a pretty realistic goal um, for reading, and it doesn't have to be like a very complicated book or, you know, can get something a little bit more simple. There are a lot of youth books um, in Hebrew as well and youth series, so you can read one of those and reading 10 pages of these a day is not that hard. אעבור את המבחן בעברית. I'll pass my Hebrew test. Yay! Though in here we're not just passing, we're... It should be a perfect score. 100%, right? אבין באופן מוחלט סרט אחד בעברית על ידי כך שאצפה בו כל יום. I'll fully understand one Hebrew movie by watching it every day. Um, well, I guess this one is not for everybody. I'm the kind of person who can watch a movie and then, like, well, now you don't have to rewind anymore, but, like, I'll finish it and then I'll just watch it again directly after, like, immediately after. Um, a lot of people, like, only watch movies once, but if you're not that type of person, then that could be a good tip for you. Azmin ochel mimisada israelit beivrit mibli leitbalbel. I will order food from an Israeli restaurant in Hebrew without getting confused. 
Um, well, you know, sometimes when you're set, standing in front of a stranger and you want to talk a foreign language, a language that you're learning, like that's the moment when it really, that's the true test, like standing in front of somebody you don't know and speaking their language. Um, but don't be shy, you know, heaven knows Israeli people aren't shy about their English or anything else. So just, you know, just do it. And if you get confused, they'll just fix you or... You know, maybe they'll move to English because they'll want to practice their English, but you can politely ask to speak Hebrew. I'll memorize five Hebrew songs. Oh God, there are some amazing Hebrew songs out there. Okay, so one of my personal favorite songs, and it's a really fun song, is called Haidische Rastaman, which is like the Jewish Rastaman. And it's a song by Ehud Banai. And I can write it down for you in Hebrew in the comments below if you want to. And it's a really fun song, and that's a good one to start learning Hebrew. It's not too fast-paced. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's like a reggae kind of a... If you guys want any recommendations, write to me down below, and I'll, you know, I'll give you my favorite ones. Asayem l'shanen, 350 milim, im kertisiot hebrewpod101.com I'll finish memorizing 350 words with flashcards on HebrewPod101.com. So to me, I think flashcards is a very good way for memorizing. I think for words is especially like words or verbs, that's really easy. Right now I'm studying Japanese, so I'm memorizing kanji with flashcards, um, which is a whole different story, but that's a really good method. Elmad ech ledaber al eruei avar hove Vatid. I'll learn how to talk about past, present, and future events. Yeah, so the good thing about Hebrew is that you only have three tenses, um, unlike English when you have like, what, I don't know, like 12. Um, so that kind of makes things easy, right? I'll master 150 words by memorizing five words every day. So... You should give yourself like realistic goals. If you're going to try and study 150 words, you're not just going to do that in one week. But learning five words a day and just memorizing them and knowing, okay, these five, I know for sure. But it's just five and it's just one day, then little by little, you'll just learn all the 150. And that's quite a lot for your vocabulary, especially in Hebrew that doesn't have that many words. Atzliach litzpot b'madurat ha'chadashot b'ivrit u'lavin ota. I'll manage to watch and understand the news in Hebrew. Well, I think that's really advanced sometimes. Like, they talk about stuff and it's like, what What are you talking about? If it's like uh, one of those open panel shows, then they shout and they yell and they get really upset about things. And that's kind of hard to understand when you're new to Hebrew or even if you're like intermediate. But that's a good goal to reach because the news are a very important thing in Israel and you can listen to them on the radio every hour. Um, and in the radio, it's very clear and very proper Hebrew as well. So maybe that's a better starting point, actually. Okay, that's it for today. We finish with what are your top 10 language learning goals for this year. Um, let me know in the comments below what do you think, what are your favorite Hebrew songs, what are your goals for this year, and if you want any recommendations on some songs, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, and I'll see you all next time. Litorot! Hi everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And today we are going to talk about 10 most romantic ideas for a date. Let's start! Aruchat Erev Leor Nerot Candlelit Dinner Aruchat Erev Leor Nerot Candlelit Dinner Ledeit Harishon Shalanu Yatsanu La Aruchat Erev Leor Nerot On our first date, we went out to a candlelit dinner. It's kind of intense for our first date, no? Lesachek <laughs> Bowling To go bowling לשחק bowling to go bowling מתחשק לך אולי ללכת לשחק bowling? Are you in the mood to go bowling? That's kind of a cute date, isn't it? I don't think people do that anymore, though. Like, I don't know of any bowling alleys that exist anymore. Too bad. ללכת לאקווריום to go to the aquarium ללכת לאקווריום 
to go to the aquarium. באילת אפשר ללכת לאקווריום התת-ימי. In Eilat, you can go to the undersea aquarium. Now that's a really good idea on a date. Like, that's... That's fun. No matter your age, like, your kid, adult, old person, teenager. I mean, an aquarium is pretty fun, in my opinion. ללכת לאופרה. To go to the opera. ללכת לאופרה. To go to the opera. זוגות רבים נהנים ללכת יחד לאופרה. Many couples are enjoying going to the opera. I've been to the opera before and it's definitely not a good date idea or just a good idea in general. ללכת לארוחת ערב וסרט. To have dinner and see a movie. ללכת לארוחת ערב וסרט. To go on a dinner and see a movie. הדייט הקלאסי הוא לצאת לארוחת ערב ולראות סרט. The classic date is to go on a dinner and see a movie. Yeah, that's... it's fun. And then after the movie, like, you have something to talk about over dinner because you've just watched a movie. לעשות פיקניק. To have a picnic. לעשות פיקניק. To go on a picnic. בימים יפים אפשר לעשות פיקניק בפארק. On nice days you can have a picnic at the park. Um, and then ants. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> לקחת הפלגה. To take a ferry ride. לקחת הפלגה. To take a ferry ride. חברה שלי הפתיעה אותי. עם הפלגה רומנטית בשקיעה. My girlfriend surprised me with a romantic sunset ferry ride. I don't think there is a place you can do that in Israel, um, but a lot of places that have like rivers and stuff, yeah, sure. ללכת על החוף. To walk on the beach. ללכת על החוף. To walk on the beach. אולי, במקום לשבת במסעדה, נצא להליכה על החוף. Maybe, instead of sitting in a restaurant, we can go for a walk on the beach. That's a nice idea, isn't it? I really like the beach. I don't like so much going into the water, but walking is great. ללכת למוזיאון To go to the museum. ללכת למוזיאון To go to the museum. רוצה ללכת למוזיאון? שמעתי על תערוכה מעניינת. Want to go to the museum? I've heard about an interesting show. Um, to me that's more of like a girlfriend's kind of a thing, but you know, if both people like museums, then why not? It's kind of romantic. לקחת שיעור כדרות. To take a pottery class. לקחת שיעור כדרות. To take a pottery class. בוא ניקח יחד שיעור כדרות. Let's take a pottery class together. I've never done that. I would love to do that, actually. Maybe not on a date. That's kind of, you know, Patrick Swayze on ghost kind of a vibe, but yeah, it sounds fun. <laughs> All right, guys, so these were the 10 most romantic ideas for a date. Let me know in the comments below about maybe some of your dates that you had before and about good... dating ideas and don't forget to check out hebrew pod 101 for more hebrew more content and i'll see you all next time shalom hello everybody edith here welcome to hebrew top words and today we are going to talk about 10 top phrases to help you in an emergency let's start call the police please Call the police, please. If it's really an emergency, you don't have to say please. All right? יש לך חום? Do you have a fever? יש לך חום? Do you have a fever? If you do have a fever and it's not just like a cold or something, you really should see a doctor. It's really important. איבדתי את הדרכון שלי. I lost my passport. איבדתי את הדרכון שלי. 
I lost my passport. You can also say passport and people will understand because sometimes in Hebrew we say passport. But usually we say darkon from the word derech, which means way, because it gives way for you to go places. Ani lo margish tov. I don't feel well. Ani lo margish tov. I don't feel well. That's a very general way of saying that you're not feeling well, um, but if you're at the doctor's office, you'll have to specify a little bit further than that. Ani tzarich rofe. I need a doctor. Ani tzarich rofe. I need a doctor. Doctor in Hebrew is rofe, and if you translate it to English, it basically means like a, a healer, <laughs> but it's not like the cosmic kind of a healer with the with the gems and crystals. It's just like that's that's the meaning of the word. Ani lo matzliach limtzo et haderech chazara lamalon sheli. I can't find the way back to my hotel. אני לא מצליח למצוא את הדרך חזרה למלון שלי. I can't find the way back to my hotel. Uh, luckily today most people have smartphones and they have a map application, so you know you can ask pretty much anybody to just put the address or the name of the hotel and they can show you how to go, so um, that's a big relief. יש בית מרקחת בסביבה? Is there a pharmacy nearby? Yes, Beit Merkachat Basviva. Is there a pharmacy nearby? In Israel, on Saturdays, usually most pharmacies and any other shops are closed, but there is always one that's supposed to be open um, 24-7. So, if it is Saturday and you're stuck, you should ask for this specific one that is open. אתה יכול לעזור לי? Can you help me? אתה יכול לעזור לי? Can you help me? To help in Hebrew is לעזור. And I ask that for people a lot when I'm at the supermarket and I can't reach the top shelf. אני צריך אמבולנס. I need an ambulance. אני צריך אמבולנס. I need an ambulance. Luckily, that's the same word in Hebrew as it is in English. So whoever you say that to, they would understand, even if you don't know the rest of the sentence. It's good enough that you say ambulance, and they'll get it. They will call. Heichan bet hacholim. Where is the hospital? Heichan bet hacholim. Where is the hospital? In Hebrew, the word hospital is translated to sick people's home. So, Beit is home or house, and Cholim is sick people. Okay, everybody, that's it. Those were 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. I hope you would never have to use them. Um, so, yeah, please let me know in the comments below if you have any good or bad experiences in the world with any emergencies and... Um, if you've encountered anything like that, don't forget to check out HebrewPod 101 for more videos, more Hebrew and more content, and I will see you all next time. Bye, Litot! Hello everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about five most popular Israeli bands. Let's go! Hadag Nachash Hadag Nachash Hadag Nachash Hadag Nachash הדג נחש היא להקת היפ-הופ פופולרית. הדג נחש is a popular hip-hop band. Um, so the name is kind of funny. It means the fish snake. The snake? Yeah, fish snake. Um, but actually it's, um, it's an acronym. In Israel, when you're a new driver, you have to put a sign on your car that says נהג חדש, which means a new driver. So they just took the same letters, mixed them around, and it turned out to be the fish snake. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. They like, they really like doing this kind of wordplay, I guess.
And talking about cars, one of their most favorite、um, songs is called "Shirat Hasticker," which is the song of the sticker. A lot of people in Israel put stickers on their、um, car bumpers, which express like political views or just any other thing, or it could be like a you know a life. <laughs> Tip a life message, and they just、uh, they took all of those stickers that you could see and turned them into a song, which is very political and it's、um, it's quite good. <laughs> machina, 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 machina. He malakot ha Israeliot ha avot bechol azmanim. Machina is one of the most loved Israeli bands of all time. Um, machina means machine in Russian. They are really a very famous group in Israel.、Um, some people say that they took a lot of their materials from a band called Madness. I don't know if you know they were popular in the eighties, which is kind of true.、Uh, but they also have some original <laughs> stuff, which is very good. So if you want to look it up, I really recommend it. Monica Six, Monica Six, Monica Six. Monica Sex. Belahakat Monica Sex. Shloshana Ganim. In Monica Sex, there are three members. So, as far as I know, the name Monica Sex is referring to Monica Lewinsky and that whole story with Bill Clinton when he said, "I did not have sex with that woman."、Um, I don't know why they chose this name for their band, but they're definitely a very, very good band. And they were very influential in the '90s rock scene in Israel, so definitely、uh, recommended to listen. Kaveret, 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 kaveret. Mufah ha'ichud shel kaveret haya meragesh. Kaveret's reunion concert was moving. Kaveret is. I think probably the most famous one in Israel. They started back in the '60s or '70s, and after they broke the band, each individual、uh, member of the band became famous on their own. And I think some of them were already famous before they started the group.、Um, so it's really a bunch of really awesome musicians. And a few years back, they did a reunion show,、um, which was really really moving for a lot of people because. Many of us kind of grew up on them on their soundtracks, so yeah. Habanot nechama, habanot nechama, habanot nechama, habanot nechama. Hi, רוצה לבוייתי להופעה של habanot nechama. Hi, want to come with me to habanot nechama concert? Um, so. I think there's a lot of controversy around Habanot Nechama. I'm not really sure why. It's an all-girl group. That's why they are called Habanot, the girls.、Um, and the, there are three women.、Um, each of them is an individually is a an musician by herself. They decided to go, come together and do this project. I think they are pretty good, but maybe they take some getting used to their music because it can be a little bit monotonous. But I think it's interesting, and you know, it's indie, it's music, it's feministic, it's it's pretty good. Okay, everybody, that's it. Those are five most popular Israeli brands. Let me know in the comments below if there is an Israeli band or artist that you like. If you already know some music, and also please、um, keep on exploring Israeli music. I think that's awesome. Don't forget to check out Hebrew Pod 101 for more Hebrew, more content, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye, Mitrot. נחנ נוספת, ימ נזמין ביום חול. יום חול, ובכן, יש לי פגישה ביום שני בבוקר, והתצוגה ביום שלישי ורביעי, אז. יום שישי יאכל את ימ, כי נוחה לסדר את הבית החדש בסופו שבוע. כן. אה, רגע. הם כותבים חמישה אسر אחוז בימים שני עד חמישי, וחמישה אחוז ביום שישי. אה, אז מה את רוצה לעשות? בוני בחר את החיזול. 
אני אסיים עם התצוגה עד אז בכל מקרה. Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at hebrewpod101.com. Hi everyone! My name is Yara. Welcome to another episode of Top Hebrew Words. And this episode is especially fun because today we're going to learn 10 phrases you always want to hear. So the first one is... Tzedakt. You were right. Tzedakt. You were right. I said it in the female form, tzedakt. For a male, it would be tzedakta. You were right. I knew it. I'm always right. Ani mitgaagat elaich. I miss you. Ani mitgaagat elaich. I miss you. This is a really interesting verb, I think, because it doesn't exist in English. In English, you say, I miss you, which is, which is really nice. But in Hebrew, you have a special verb for this feeling of missing someone or something. Mitgaagea. For a male, mitgaagat for a female. So I like this one. Ani mitgaagat elaich. At tabachit meula. You're an excellent cook. At tabachit meula. You're an excellent cook. For a male, at tabach meule. At niret nehedar hayom. You look great today. At niret nehedar hayom. You look great today. For a male, ata nire nehedar hayom. הבאתי לך משהו מיוחד. I brought you something special. הבאתי לך משהו מיוחד. I brought you something special. For a male, הבאתי לך משהו מיוחד. התקציב הוא בלתי מוגבל. The budget is unlimited. התקציב הוא בלתי מוגבל. The budget is unlimited. This goes for all genders. <laughs> Yay! את המנצחת. You are the winner. Yeah, it's always fun to hear. For a female, it would be at ha-menatzachat. You are the winner. Ata menatzach. You are the winner. <laughs> I want to thank my parents and everyone that helped me get here. <laughs> you love me. You really love me. Ye bonus besof ha-chodesh. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. יהיה בונוס בסוף החודש. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Yes. עשית עבודה נהדרת. You did a great job. עשית עבודה נהדרת. You did a great job. It's always fun to hear. For a male, it would be עשית עבודה נהדרת. תודה, לא היינו יכולים לעשות את זה בלעדייך. Thanks, we couldn't have done this without you. תודה, לא יכולנו לעשות את זה בלעדייך. Thanks, we couldn't have done this without you. For a male, biladecha. These were 10 phrases you always want to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey, here's a huge pile of money. Gever veisha bochrim malon. Eize malon hem ivcheru? אנחנו צריכים לבחור מלון לטיול שלנו בחודש הבא. בסדר, בואי נבדוק באינטרנט. מלון אושן נמצא קרוב לחוף. כתוב שזה 120 דולר לאדם ללילה, מקבלים גם ארוחת בוקר עם בופה. מה לגבי מלון פיין? זה 80 דולרים ללילה. אני לא רוצה לבזבז יותר מדי על לינה. Hmm. אבל מלון פיין רחוק מהחוף וממרכז העיר, וכתוב שצריך לשלם על אינטרנט אלחוטי. מה לגבי מלון סאנרייז? הוא בדרך כלל עולה 140 דולרים ללילה, אבל עכשיו יש להם מבצע ונוכל להתארח שם תמורת 90 דולרים. זה בין החוף ומרכז העיר. גם יש שם אינטרנט אלחוטי בחינם. נשמע טוב. אה, חכה. כתוב שהמבצע הוא רק עבור השבוע הבא. אה, לא ראיתי את זה. אז מה לגבי המקום הזה, מלון רויאל? הוא נמצא ממש במרכז העיר ועולה 100 דולר ללילה. החדר לא נראה משהו, אבל יש להם אינטרנט אלחוטי בחינם. בסדר, בואי נזמין במלון הזה. אה, הוא כבר מלא לגמרי. אוף. אז נראה לי שהראשון הוא הכי טוב. הוא מלא? לא, הוא לא. מצוין. 
איזה מלון הם יבחרו? גבר ואישה בוחרים מלון. איזה מלון הם יבחרו? אנחנו צריכים לבחור מלון לטיול שלנו בחודש הבא. בסדר, בואי נבדוק באינטרנט. מלון אושן נמצא קרוב לחוף. כתוב שזה 120 דולר לאדם ללילה, מקבלים גם ארוחת בוקר עם בופה. מה לגבי מלון פיין? זה 80 דולרים ללילה. אני לא רוצה לבזבז יותר מדי על לינה. Hmm. אבל מלון פיין רחוק מהחוף וממרכז העיר, וכתוב שצריך לשלם על אינטרנט אלחוטי. מה לגבי מלון סאנרייז? הוא בדרך כלל עולה 140 דולרים ללילה, אבל עכשיו יש להם מבצע ונוכל להתארח שם תמורת 90 דולרים. זה בין החוף ומרכז העיר. גם יש שם אינטרנט אלחוטי בחינם. נשמע טוב. אה, חכה. כתוב שהמבצע הוא רק עבור השבוע הבא. אה, לא ראיתי את זה. אז מה לגבי המקום הזה, מלון רויאל? הוא נמצא ממש במרכז העיר ועולה 100 דולר ללילה. החדר לא נראה משהו, אבל יש להם אינטרנט אלחוטי בחינם. בסדר. בואי נזמין במלון הזה. אה, הוא כבר מלא לגמרי. אוף, אז נראה לי שהראשון הוא הכי טוב. הוא מלא? לא, הוא לא. מצוין. גבר ואישה משוחחים בנוגע לסידור של חדר הישיבות. איך הם יסדרו את השולחנות? בואי נסדר את השולחנות לישיבה של מחר. בסדר. אנחנו צריכים לשים את השולחנות במרכז החדר כך שכולם ישבו מסביב ויפנו זה לזה? לא. קודם כל תהיה פעילות קבוצתית. אז בואי נפריד את השולחנות לארבע קבוצות. בכל קבוצה ישבו ארבעה אנשים. בסדר. ואני אשים נייר כתיבה ועטים על כל אחד מהשולחנות. תודה. גם נעביר הדרכה קצרה באמצעות המקרן לפני תחילת הפעילות. אז נצטרך את המקרן כאן. בסדר. גם נשתמש בלוח המחיק, לא? זה בסדר אם נשים את הלוח המחיק ליד המסך? Mm, למה שלא נשים את הלוח המחיק בצד השני של המסך? בואי נשים אותו בצד האחורי של החדר. הבנתי. וזכרי להחזיר את כל הדברים אחרי הישיבה. הצמידי זוגות של שולחנות וסדרי אותם בארבע שורות. איך הם יסדרו את השולחנות? גבר ואישה משוחחים בנוגע לסידור של חדר הישיבות. איך הם יסדרו את השולחנות? בואי נסדר את השולחנות לישיבה של מחר. בסדר. אנחנו צריכים לשים את השולחנות במרכז החדר כך שכולם ישבו מסביב ויפנו זה לזה? לא. קודם כל תהיה פעילות קבוצתית, אז בואי נפריד את השולחנות לארבע קבוצות, בכל קבוצה ישבו ארבעה אנשים. בסדר, ואני אשים נייר כתיבה ועטים על כל אחד מהשולחנות. תודה. גם נעביר הדרכה קצרה באמצעות המקרן לפני תחילת הפעילות, אז נצטרך את המקרן כאן. בסדר. גם נשתמש בלוח המחיק, לא? זה בסדר אם נשים את הלוח המחיק ליד המסך? Mm, למה שלא נשים את הלוח המחיק בצד השני של המסך? בואי נשים אותו בצד האחורי של החדר. הבנתי. וזכרי להחזיר את כל הדברים אחרי הישיבה. הצמידי זוגות של שולחנות וסדרי אותם בארבע שורות. גבר ואישה משוחחים על ציוד משרדי. מה יזמין הגבר? אתה צריך לבדוק את מלאי הציוד המשרדי שלנו ולהזמין את הפריטים הנדרשים פעם בחודש. הפעם, בוא נבדוק אותו יחד עם הרשימה הזו. תודה. אז בואי נתחיל עם הנייר. נראה שנשארה רק קופסה אחת. אנחנו משתמשים בהרבה נייר בכל יום, אז בואו נזמין עוד שתי קופסאות. בסדר. הדיו צבעוני במדפסת נגמר. שנזמין עוד? אה. 
זו לא בעיה, כי אנחנו לא מדפיסים מסמכים בצבע. אה, לא? טוב. נראה שחסר דיו בחלק מהטושים ללוח המחיק. כן, צריך להחליף אותם. אנחנו מקבלים הנחה בהזמנת סט של חמישה טושים, אז בואו נעשה את זה. בסדר. אה, אנחנו יכולים להזמין עכבר באותה הזדמנות? העכבר שלי מגיב ממש לאט. אני חושבת שזה בגלל שהסוללה כמעט ריקה. בואו נבדוק את מלאי הסוללות ונזמין עוד אם לא נותרו הרבה. כמובן. ובכן, יש לנו כאן שלוש סוללות. אתה יכול לקחת שתיים בשביל העכבר שלך, אבל תקנה חבילה של שש סוללות כדי להחליף אותן. מה יזמין הגבר? גבר ואישה משוחחים על ציוד משרדי. מה יזמין הגבר? אתה צריך לבדוק את מלאי הציוד המשרדי שלנו ולהזמין את הפריטים הנדרשים פעם בחודש. הפעם, בוא נבדוק אותו יחד עם הרשימה הזו. תודה. אז בואי נתחיל עם הנייר. נראה שנשארה רק קופסה אחת. אנחנו משתמשים בהרבה נייר בכל יום, אז בואו נזמין עוד שתי קופסאות. בסדר. הדיו צבעוני במדפסת נגמר. שנזמין עוד? אה, זו לא בעיה, כי אנחנו לא מדפיסים מסמכים בצבע. אה, לא? טוב. נראה שחסר דיו בחלק מהטושים ללוח המחיק. כן, צריך להחליף אותם. אנחנו מקבלים הנחה בהזמנת סט של חמישה טושים, אז בואו נעשה את זה. בסדר. אה, אנחנו יכולים להזמין עכבר באותה הזדמנות? העכבר שלי מגיב ממש לאט. אני חושבת שזה בגלל שהסוללה כמעט ריקה. בואו נבדוק את מלאי הסוללות ונזמין עוד אם לא נותרו הרבה. כמובן. ובכן, יש לנו כאן שלוש סוללות. אתה יכול לקחת שתיים בשביל העכבר שלך, אבל תקנה חבילה של שש סוללות כדי להחליף אותן. אישה שואלת גבר במרכז מבקרים כיצד להגיע לנמל התעופה. לאן היא תלך כעת? סלח לי, אני רוצה להגיע לנמל התעופה. תוכל לומר לי איך מגיעים לשם? בוודאי. יש כמה דרכים להגיע אליו. את יכולה לעלות על אוטובוס מספר 1. זו נסיעה של שעה וחצי בערך לנמל התעופה, אבל מחיר הכרטיס הוא הזול ביותר. את יכולה לעלות על אוטובוס מספר 2. זו נסיעה של 50 דקות בערך, משום שזה קו ללא עצירות, אבל הוא יוצא פעם בשעה, והוא קצת יותר יקר. הבנתי. מה לגבי מוניות? כן, יש תחנת מוניות מול מרכז המבקרים הזה, והנסיעה אורכת בערך שעה. אבל זה הרבה יותר יקר מהאוטובוסים, בגלל שהן נוסעות בכביש האגרה וגובות תוספת עבור מזוודות גדולות. אה, לא ציפיתי לזה. זה יקר מדי בשבילי. דרך אגב, קנית משהו במרכז הקניות במהלך השהייה שלך? הם מספקים שירות הסעות מהכיכר לנמל התעופה עבור לקוחות שקנו מהם. וואו, לא ידעתי. עדיין לא קניתי, אבל התכוונתי לקנות מזכרות בכל מקרה. אז את יכולה להשתמש בהם. לאן היא תלך כעת? אישה שואלת גבר במרכז מבקרים כיצד להגיע לנמל התעופה. לאן היא תלך כעת? סלח לי, אני רוצה להגיע לנמל התעופה. תוכל לומר לי איך מגיעים לשם? בוודאי. יש כמה דרכים להגיע אליו. את יכולה לעלות על אוטובוס מספר 1. זו נסיעה של שעה וחצי בערך לנמל התעופה, אבל מחיר הכרטיס הוא הזול ביותר. את יכולה לעלות על אוטובוס מספר 2. זו נסיעה של 50 דקות בערך, משום שזה קו ללא עצירות, אבל הוא יוצא פעם בשעה והוא קצת יותר יקר. הבנתי. מה לגבי מוניות? כן, יש תחנת מוניות מול מרכז המבקרים הזה, והנסיעה אורכת בערך שעה, אבל זה הרבה יותר יקר מהאוטובוסים, בגלל שהן נוסעות בכביש האגרה וגובות תוספת עבור מזוודות גדולות. אה, לא ציפיתי לזה. זה יקר מדי בשבילי. דרך אגב, קנית משהו במרכז הקניות במהלך השהייה שלך? 
הם מספקים שירות הסעות מהכיכר לנמל התעופה עבור לקוחות שקנו מהם. וואו, לא ידעתי. עדיין לא קניתי, אבל התכוונתי לקנות מזכרות בכל מקרה. אז את יכולה להשתמש בהם. אישה וספק משוחחים בטלפון. מה תקבל האישה קודם? אני צריכה שתייצרו ותשלחו לי עוד סוודרים עבור המבצע בחודש הבא. בסדר, מה בדיוק את צריכה? אנחנו רוצים אלף יחידות של סוודרים אדומים קטנים ו-400 יחידות של סוודרים אדומים בינוניים. אנחנו צריכים גם 600 יחידות של סוודרים ירוקים קטנים ו-200 יחידות של סוודרים ירוקים בינוניים עד סוף החודש. סוודרים אדומים וירוקים. למען האמת, הצמר הירוק שלנו עומד להיגמר, ואנחנו צריכים להשיג עוד מספקים אחרים. נייצר קודם כל את הסוודרים האדומים. לא, לא, לא. אנחנו חייבים למסור את הסוודרים האדומים והירוקים ביחד. אז בבקשה תייצרו כמה סוודרים ירוקים שתוכלו. בסדר. אני חושב שאנחנו יכולים לייצר 200 יחידות של סוודרים ירוקים עכשיו. איזה גודל את צריכה קודם? אנחנו צריכים את הקטנים קודם. סליחה על ההתראה הקצרה, אבל אנחנו ממש זקוקים לעזרה שלכם. בסדר גמור. נעשה כמיטב יכולתנו. נשלח את הסוודרים הירוקים האלה ואת כל הסוודרים האדומים. מה תקבל האישה קודם? אישה וספק משוחחים בטלפון. מה תקבל האישה קודם? אני צריכה שתייצרו ותשלחו לי עוד סוודרים עבור המבצע בחודש הבא. בסדר, מה בדיוק את צריכה? אנחנו רוצים אלף יחידות של סוודרים אדומים קטנים ו-400 יחידות של סוודרים אדומים בינוניים. אנחנו צריכים גם 600 יחידות של סוודרים ירוקים קטנים ו-200 יחידות של סוודרים ירוקים בינוניים עד סוף החודש. סוודרים אדומים וירוקים. למען האמת, הצמר הירוק שלנו עומד להיגמר, ואנחנו צריכים להשיג עוד מספקים אחרים. נייצר קודם כל את הסוודרים האדומים. לא, לא, לא. אנחנו חייבים למסור את הסוודרים האדומים והירוקים ביחד. אז בבקשה תייצרו כמה סוודרים ירוקים שתוכלו. בסדר. אני חושב שאנחנו יכולים לייצר 200 יחידות של סוודרים ירוקים עכשיו. איזה גודל את צריכה קודם? אנחנו צריכים את הקטנים קודם. סליחה על ההתראה הקצרה, אבל אנחנו ממש זקוקים לעזרה שלכם. בסדר גמור. נעשה כמיטב יכולתנו. נשלח את הסוודרים הירוקים האלה ואת כל הסוודרים האדומים. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Edith. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started learning Hebrew. That's right, and we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning Hebrew and how to get started. Let's begin with the most obvious question. Why learn a new language? There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off-limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language can help you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory as opposed to those who didn't. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. 
This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Hebrew in particular? Well, do you know the Bible? That was written in Hebrew. One of the best reasons for learning Hebrew is to gain access to ancient texts in their original language. The Old Testament of the Bible was written in Biblical Hebrew. By learning modern Hebrew, you can begin to understand what the original writers intended in these complex texts. These ancient words take on new meaning when you know the word in Hebrew. Speaking of history, modern Hebrew made history when it became a spoken language after 2,000 years of only being used for prayer and in religious texts. That's right, Hebrew is unique in this way. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, a man called Eliezer ben Yehuda worked hard to revive Hebrew as a spoken language. By learning Hebrew, you can be a part of this unique movement of history. Today, Israel is a leader in the area of high-tech industry. And this means there are many jobs and business opportunities in tech in Israel. Although most Israelis speak English, learning Hebrew will help you communicate in an effective way with Israelis. There are many times knowing the language and culture of Israel will give you an advantage when making a business deal or finding work in Israel. Another reason to learn Hebrew is to better understand politics in the region. There is quite a lot going on in the Middle East right now. Learning Hebrew will help you understand Israeli politics and perspective. You'll be able to read Israeli newspapers and watch Israeli news and learn about this intense region in a new way. There are so many reasons to learn Hebrew. Okay then. We've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Hebrew, but how should they get started, Edith? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Hebrew and building up from there. The good news is that you already know some Hebrew. Hallelujah. Chutzpah. Chumus. These are words that have made their way into English, but the reverse is also true. Many English words have also made their way into Hebrew. In fact, for many modern technologies, like telephone or television, the word most often used in Hebrew is derived from English. Telefon, Televisia, Autobus. So there are many words you already know in Hebrew. Let's teach you something that you might not know, but is very useful. Toda. It means thank you in Hebrew. That's a useful phrase. Can you tell us more about these characters, though? Sure. In Hebrew, you use the Hebrew alphabet. Once you learn the letters and their sounds, it's actually pretty easy to read. Most letters in Hebrew represent a consonant sound, but we also use a system of dots to represent vowels. These vowel dots are called nikud. When you're learning to read, you read texts with the vowel dots. As you get better, you read the letters without the dots. Isn't that a little confusing? No, it's actually easier than it looks. Hebrew is a systematic language, and the vowel sounds will be clear from the structure of the word. This is toda with the vowel dots, toda. And this is toda without the vowel dots, toda. You'll learn the Hebrew writing system eventually, but for now, let's put up some romanization to help you get started. The romanization will make it easier for you to learn Hebrew until you learn to read the letters yourself. That certainly makes things much easier to learn. Well, okay then. Now listen and repeat after eat it. Toda. Now you try. Toda. Your turn again. Toda. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in Hebrew. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. The Hebrew language has a unique history, and learning Hebrew will open up a new aspect of history for you. And to say thank you in Hebrew, it's... Toda. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken, so don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Hebrew, there are only 22 letters of the alphabet, and technically, they're all consonants. There are also vowel sounds which are shown by the dot system called nikud. Many of the sounds are similar to English, like b, v, sh, s, and t. B 
v sh s t but there are a few sounds you may not recognize at first like h a s in hebrew words are stressed differently than in english stress is usually on the last syllable of the word avoda mutzet mitlabesh but in some cases the stress is on the second to last syllable of the word lakoach nosea mitlabeshet Letters produce consonant sounds. These sounds are combined with vowel sounds indicated by the nikud. Vowel sounds you find in Hebrew are all found in English as well. A, e, i, o, u. There are different notations for these vowels, but in most cases, the basic vowel sound stays the same. The pattern of the word and the placement of the vowel determines which vowel symbol will be used. For example, the word for a language, lashon, and the word for crisis, mshber, both have a vowels after the first letter. But because of the way the word is constructed, the vowels are notated differently. Some letters have two sounds, depending on if there's a stress on the consonant or not. Bet is both b and v. Kaf is both k and ch. Pe is both p and f. There is also one other letter that changes sound according to the dot above it. That's shin and sin. It makes the sh sound when the dot is on the right, and the s sound when the dot is on the left. The most daunting group of letters are the guttural letters. A, h, ch, a, r. Three of these letters are pronounced deep in the throat. These may feel unusual at first, but are fun to say once you get the hang of them. Ein, chet, reish. Most of the sounds in Hebrew are already sounds you use in English. That means that if you were to simply imitate a Hebrew speaker, your pronunciation would be correct a lot of the time. For example, listen and repeat after Edith. Rakevet. Rakevet. Chances are your pronunciation was pretty spot on. The K, V, and T sounds are practically identical to English. It's only the R that's a little different. Focus on this first letter. It's often written as an R, but don't be fooled. This letter is pronounced differently than an English R. It's pronounced at the back of the throat, instead of forward in the mouth. Listen to Edith say this letter. R. R. It's actually closer to the German or French R, but without the roll. Nearly all sounds in Hebrew are identical to English, like the K, V, and T sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are completely new to you. They're the ones we need to look out for. In the previous lesson, we taught you how to say thank you in Hebrew. Do you remember what it was? It's... Toda. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew has 22 letters, but even more sounds. The extra sounds come from the vowels and the consonants that can represent two sounds instead of one. Many of the sounds in Hebrew are identical to the sounds in English. And there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The first thing you must remember when reading Hebrew is that it's read from right to left. Consider the English sentence, he ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, he ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, he ate apple, we can see that the subject he is presented first, followed by the verb ate. And then finally, the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence, he ate an apple, in Hebrew. Hu achal tapuach. In Hebrew, you only need an article for definite articles. Here we have only an indefinite article. So we don't need a word like a or n. If we break down the Hebrew sentence, 
we get the subject, who, meaning he. Then comes the verb, achal, meaning ate. And finally, we have the object, tapuach, meaning apple. The word order for Hebrew is the same as English, subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. In Hebrew, for simple sentences with a verb, the order is the same as in English. Word order varies in Hebrew for emphasis and in more complicated sentences. You don't have to worry about that until you learn the basics. For now, use the basic subject, verb, object form when making sentences in Hebrew. Okay, let's move on to the next section. In Hebrew, you want to begin with the subject of your sentence. Let's start with the pronoun I. In Hebrew, that's ani. Next, you need your verb. In the present tense, there are four forms for verbs according to masculine, feminine, masculine plural, and feminine plural. When your subject is I, the verb is conjugated either in masculine or feminine, depending on who is talking. Using the verb to love, le'ehov, as an example, the masculine is ohev, and the feminine is ohevet. So, what do we have so far? I'm a woman, so I would use the feminine. Ani ohevet. The last thing we need is an object, something you love. How about dogs? Klavim. Ani ohevet klavim. I love dogs. If I were a man, I would say, Ani ohev klavim. So, it's as simple as that, and very similar to English. Now it's your turn. See if you can use these words to make the sentence, The boy loves dogs. Ohev. Klavim. Hayeled. Did you succeed? First you need the subject, the boy. In the present tense in Hebrew, the verb is determined by the number and gender of the subject. Here we have one boy. Hayeled. Then you need to add the verb, the boy loves. This verb will be conjugated in masculine singular for the boy. That's ohev. Hayeled ohev. Finally, you add the object. Altogether, the boy loves dogs. Hayeled ohev klavim. But what if you're not a dog lover and you want to express that in Hebrew? Forming the negative in Hebrew is very easy. You just need to know one word. Lo. To make the sentence negative, you add this word before the verb. Ani lo ohevet klavim. Great! Now you know how to make a sentence in Hebrew and you know how to say it in the negative. Next, we're going to teach you one more thing. How to ask a question in Hebrew. This is really difficult. Are you ready for this? You don't have to change a word in the sentence. To ask a question in Hebrew, you change how you say the words in the sentence. Let's hear the boy loves dogs as a question. Let's hear the difference between the normal sentence and the question. The normal sentence is The question is The formal way to ask this as a question is to add a word to the beginning of the sentence. But this way is not used very often in speech. You say ha'im before the rest of the sentence. Ha'im ha'yeled ohev klavim? If you want to ask who loves dogs, you replace the subject with the word for who. That word is mi. Mi ohev klavim? Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order, just like in English. Secondly, you learned how to make a sentence negative by adding one word before the verb. Lastly, you learned that asking questions in Hebrew is easy because you only have to change the way you say the sentence to ask a question. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew writing. In Hebrew, we use two different scripts, one for print and one for handwriting. Most people learn the printed script first and even learn to write their letters this way. These are called otiot dfus. Printed letters are rarely used for handwriting other than in elementary school. So most people learn script letters very quickly after learning the printed letters. Script letters are called otiot ktav. One thing you don't have to worry about in Hebrew is capital letters. There's only one case for letters in Hebrew. 
Here's some general information about Hebrew letters. Hebrew is read right to left, the opposite of English. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. You may be thinking, but what about vowels, right? These dots are placed underneath or next to the letter in order to let you know what vowel comes after the consonant. Here is the word for dog, kelev, without nikud. And here it is with nikud. Let's do the same with the word for boy, yeled. Without nikud, it's... And with nikud, it looks like this. Those are both with e vowels. Let's look at one with some other vowels. How about the word for mountains, harim? Here it is with nikud. This has both an a vowel and an e vowel. Although this is very useful when you're learning Hebrew, don't get used to it. Most things in Hebrew are written without the vowel dots. The reason we usually don't use nikud when writing Hebrew is that we don't really need it. That's right. Hebrew is very systematic and structured. It's very methodical and logical. Words are created according to patterns, and this helps you figure out what vowels are used in the words. You already know the word for dog, which is kelev. Next time you see this word, you don't need to see the vowels because you know they are there. You'll have to rely on what you've learned. There are some letters in Hebrew that will indicate what vowels are present. These letters are technically consonants, but can behave like vowels. Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yud, Ein. For example, the letter Hey often ends a word with an A or an E sound, like in the words Laila for night and Bonet, the masculine singular form for build. There are five letters that change form when they're at the end of a word, but they're still the same letter. Chaf, chaf sofit, mem, mem sofit, nun, nun sofit, pe, pe sofit, tzadi, tzadi sofit. Here is an example of how this works. The letter mem looks like this in the beginning or middle of the word, mem, like in the word for stage, bama. When it comes in the end, it looks like this, mem, like in the word for the sea, yam. Three letters can have two different sounds depending on whether they are in a stressed position or not. Bet is both b and v. In the word bama, or stage, it makes a b sound, and in the word for dog, or kelev, it makes a v sound. Chaf is both k and ch. For this example, we can use the word for dog again. In kelev, this letter makes a k sound. And in the word for correct, which is nchon, it makes a ch sound. This letter also has a special end form that looks like this. When it comes at the end of the word, like chiyuch, the word for smile, it's always pronounced ch. Pe is both p and f. In the word Papa, or butterfly, this letter is pronounced with a p sound. In the word for book, or sefer, it's pronounced with a f sound. There are also six pairs of letters that at one point in history had different sounds, but today sound very similar. Aleph and Ein, Bet and Vav, Chet and Chaf, Tet and Taf, Kaf and Kuf. Samech and Sin. For example, the words telephone, meaning telephone, and chuva, meaning answer, begin with two different letters of the alphabet. But you would never know that unless you saw them written. One interesting aspect of the Hebrew alphabet is the letters also represent numbers. Aleph represents the number one. Bet represents the number two and so on. When you get to the number 10, or Yud, we add the first nine letters to it to represent 11 through 19. The letters can be combined to create numbers into the hundreds and thousands. You can find the first 10 letters used as numbers in many day-to-day -day contexts. For instance, Sunday is often referred to as 
Yom Aleph, or Day One. The first semester in university is called Semester Aleph. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are two different scripts used to write Hebrew: printed script and written script. Hebrew is written and read from right to left. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are consonants. There are also vowels in Hebrew, and these are written with a dot system. Some letters in Hebrew cover two sounds, and other sounds are covered by two letters. And lastly, the Hebrew alphabet can also be used to represent numbers. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Hebrew words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you're repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this phrase in the first lesson of this series. Do you remember what it was? Toda. It means thank you. Keep repeating after eat it until you get it. Toda. Your turn. Toda. Toda. But what if you want to express even greater thanks, like in English when you say "thank you very much"? Then you would add a raba after the toda. Altogether, it's toda raba. The next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to apologize or to excuse yourself. Slicha. It means "excuse me" or "I'm sorry." Slicha. Use this phrase when you want to grab a waiter's attention, or when you're hustling through the busy streets of Tel Aviv. Slicha. Your turn. Slicha. Imagine you're on the street and you want to stop someone to ask them for directions. What do you say? Slicha. Okay. One last time. Slicha. Now you can say thank you, thank you very much, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Hebrew. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the train station, or where the hotel is. To ask where something is, put the Hebrew word for where first, and then add the place you want to find. Eifel. That's Hebrew for where. For example, if you want to ask where is the bathroom, Eifo Shirutim. For the train station, it'll be Eifo Tachanat Harakevet, and so on. You can ask where something is by starting with Eifo. You might have noticed that this sentence is a few words shorter than the English equivalent. Well, that's because in Hebrew we don't have a word for is. And the word for the is connected to the noun, so in the sentence "eifo shirutim," you're actually saying "where the bathroom." So that makes it a little simpler. You only need to know the word for where, "eifo," and the destination you want to get to. Let's practice these two sentences again. First is "where is the bathroom?" "eifo shirutim." Your turn. Eifo shirutim. The second word of this sentence is the word we use for bathroom in Hebrew. Shirutim. Technically, this word means services. Okay, now let's teach you some vocabulary so that you can use it in the sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. Beit malon. Hotel. Beit malon. Eifo beit hamalon. If you ask someone this question, they'll direct you to the closest hotel. If you'd like to ask where a specific hotel is, like Hilton, for example, simply place the name after hotel. Beit Malon. Beit Malon Hilton. Eifo Beit Hamalon Hilton. Next, Makolet. Convenience store. Makolet. Eifo Hamakolet. Our second example sentence was. Where is the train station? Eifo tachanat harakevet. The second word in this sentence means station, and the last word means train. Eifo tachanat harakevet. Your turn. Eifo tachanat harakevet. 
You can substitute almost anything and simply start with Eifu to ask where something is in Hebrew. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and how to ask where something is in Hebrew. And in this series, we introduce you to the basics of Hebrew pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Edith. Listen to some of her tips on how to learn Hebrew from a native Hebrew speaker's perspective. The best way to learn Hebrew, particularly if you want to improve your communication skills, is to watch and study contemporary Hebrew videos. That's because we often use expressions in daily conversations that aren't necessarily introduced in grammar textbooks. The biggest mistake that I see learners make is stressing too much about making the guttural letter sounds. They may sound funny to you in the beginning, but if you loosen your mouth and just go with the flow, you'll learn that it's actually fun to make these sounds. Watching contemporary videos, such as our videos here at HebrewPod101.com, will ensure that you're learning real, applicable Hebrew in the fastest and most effective way, and you'll be able to perfect the sounds of Hebrew by repeating after us in the videos. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Hebrew, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Hebrew fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Hebrew in 3 Minutes series, where we teach you basic grammar and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Hebrew, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Bye! Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.